Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. If you're interested in Fedora 26, the alpha release has finally come out. So we're going to take a look at that today. And if you're curious about the changes that are being made, you can check it out on the Fedora Project Wiki and go to slash releases slash 26 change set. Now, there's quite a few changes that are going to be made, some that are significant, others not so significant. One of the ones that I was looking at that looks very interesting to me is an update to DNF to 2.0. Now, according to the documentation here, and we're going to have to see ourselves, but it looks like DNF 2.0 uh, is not compatible with DNF version 1, but the cool thing about it is they've done some compatibility changes that will make it more compatible with the uh, YUM, Yellow Dog Update Manager interface. So it may be that it's actually going to work better depending on what command set you're used to using, but they do point out that unfortunately this particular version does have some ca compatibility issues with uh, previous versions of DNF1. So if you were doing any scripting with DNF1 for updates or installations or package management, you may experience some problems, although I think they're going to be very few. If we go check out the changes in DNF2 compared to DNF1, there's really very little. But they give, I'm, I'm assuming these are just some examples and that there's going to be even more. They reintroduce YUM's configuration options like include packages and exclude packages and uh, DNF group install is now an option so before it used to be a subcommand and now it's going to be an option. So these are just a couple of examples of the changes in DNF. Uh, OpenSSL is going to be upgraded to 1.1.0 so the whole point here, of course, is just to update OpenSSL to the 1.1 or what I think is the latest branch. I'd have to check. And there's going to be some improvements and some new algorithms that are going to be added in. And here's a really good point they make. The older 1.02 branch is only going to get bug fixes and security fixes. So any new features are going to be built into the 1.1.0 branch. Python 3.6 will be installed over 3.5. There's a Synaptics driver that they're going to retire. I'm a little concerned about this, but not too concerned. Um, they are going to retire the older Synaptics XORG-X11 driver. And there is an updated driver for Fedora, which is XORG-X11 Live Input. And I'm pretty sure that one's been the one that's been in use for most Fedora versions since 22 and I haven't seen any problems. I can't say it's better or worse but I definitely haven't had any problems. Now on my Lenovo Yoga 910 I will say that in all honesty um, I've had really good results with that particular driver on the 9 Yoga 910. So if you're curious about any of these updates make sure you come in and have a look and see if any of these will affect you. Now there's some self-contained changes here too and looking at these there's a couple that I think are significant at least for me. Uh, one is I want to check out the LXQT spin and see what that's all about in the future when I get a chance. PHP is being updated to 7.1. Uh, if you run bind, if you're running DNS, the version supported now is going to be updated to 9.11 which is a good thing and I'd like to point out at this point one of the things that I don't like about Fedora whenever they do an update that's a minor revision in Fedora of a package typically what I see is this particular package will be updated in Fedora 26 but it will not be updated in previous Fedora releases and I know everybody says yes but that's what you can expect. But the thing about it is Fedora actually uh, maintains three previous Fedora revisions. So 
you would think 9.11 would show up in Fedora 25 and 24, but I don't think it will. Usually what I see is a minor release. Uh, another example, let's see if we can find it real quick, uh, is GNOME 3.24. I'm sure I've scrolled past it right here. I wouldn't expect to see GNOME 3.24 showing up in Fedora 25. Usually they just don't do updates. They'll do minor fixes and security patches, but you won't see a minor revision change showing up in Fedora 25 or 24. Well, I am recording with uh, OBS, and I had some problems getting recording going. Uh, I used to use Voco Screen and that wasn't working so good. Right now I'm using OBS. Voco Screen probably takes up about the same processing. I do have six cores, so we're going to see how this goes. I'm actually running this on my AMD Phenom uh, X6 1055T processor with 16 gigs of RAM, and it's overclocked from 2.8 gigs to. 3.2 gigahertz, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start a new virtual machine here. I'm going to call this one Fedora 26. And I think we'll give it 4 gigs. We certainly have the memory for it. Might make it have slightly less problems. And we'll create a hard disk. We use a VDI image. I always do dynamically allocated. I'm on an SSD anyway. And I'm going to put this up a little bit higher. I usually do like a 60, just in case I want to do some serious experimentation. Whoops, not that much. Not 608 gigabytes. I don't want it quite that large. I'll do create. And when I first power it on, of course... It's looking in my DVD drive, but I'm going to give it an ISO file. And I'm going to go ahead and click Start. I think I'm only using one core. I was using three cores when I was... I actually tried to record this earlier, and the, so the uh, video software wasn't recording, so... I was really bummed out because uh, I went through the install and everything, and I thought I clicked start on Vocal Screen, and lo and behold, I apparently didn't. Um, another problem that I've been seeing with Vocal Screen, I don't know if anybody else has been having this problem. The microphone, if you're using a USB microphone, will stop working. And here's the killer: once if your USB microphone, it's like the, the driver or something inside OBS crashes, for whatever reason, there's no audio recorded. So you don't have the audio up until the point of the crash. And what I'll see is the microphone will be, you can see the levels bouncing up and down in OBS, and then all of a sudden it just stops, like it's not enabled. And you lose all of your audio, 100% of it, which I don't get. But anyway, um, so I've got my cell phone here and I'm using my lavalier mic because I'm just that paranoid. I don't want to have to re-record this all again. So let's check out the settings while we're waiting for boot up here. Uh, what did I end up doing? I went with default, so I'm thinking, yeah, just one core. I could have up to 12, and maybe I'll increase that to 2. It's really not tapping out my CPU that much. <clears throat> but I am going to do an install to hard drive. What do you think of this wallpaper? Doesn't it look kind of creepy? These look like people. This one looks like Darth Vader in the distance, which I think is kind of cool. But this looks like somebody holding their hands up or something. I don't know. Strange. All right, I'll do English, and we're being warned that the alpha software is pre-released, and therefore you could have problems, no surprise there. And I'll click Done. 
I'm actually thinking that this is running better uh, with one core. I could be wrong. I don't know. It's slower, I would say. And I'll begin installation. Might as well set a password while I'm waiting. <clears throat> and done. And let's create a user. Now let's see, if I do... Yeah, I don't want M. Evans. I'll just put in Mark. That's what I usually do. And I'm going to make this user an administrator, a.k.a. add them to sudoers, and then we'll put in a password. And we will do done. Really, honestly, it seems to be running about the same speed as it was yesterday when I did the install. So, so far with this pre-release of Fedora 26, there really aren't any changes in the installation method. Haven't seen anything big. We'll see. While we're waiting, I wanted to show you something. Um, so, apparently, yesterday, for about maybe 48 hours, at least 24 hours... I was trying to record this video, and of course I was trying to get to the wiki. Uh, I was trying to do updates. And uh, everything here was red and was labeled as down. You could get to these services some of the time, but very rarely. So they do have one thing that's still down, Bugzilla, but everything else seems to be okay which is good. I was a little surprised. It actually got reported on Slashdot as well that they were down. And uh, some of the commentary on Slashdot was hilarious. They were acting like it was the end of Red Hat, but I mean, there's going to be outages. What do you expect? It's a network. Things happen. Anyway, everything seems to be back up and working well, which makes me very happy. All right, let's go back and see where our install is actually doing really well and I've been running system monitor over here just to keep an eye on processor usage because I am recording at the same time I have to say on the desktop and I know all of you are gonna say yeah well what'd you think Mark uh, you know when I was recording on my Yoga 910 which also doesn't really have very good hardware support, uh, at least for OBS. I would have to compile FFmpeg with Intel HD 620 support, which would be very difficult, not impossible. And I think I would also have to compile uh, OBS Studio as well to uh, make use of my built-in GPU. Same thing here with OBS. I don't have the built-in GPU support. Now, the motherboard that I'm running on right now, PCIe slot got burned out. I don't know how it happened. Uh, the computer was shut down for a couple weeks. I powered it up. The NVIDIA card that I had in there wouldn't work well. I took the card out. My son and I tested it in other computers, and it worked fine. So uh, we tried another card in that slot, and it also would not work. It has on-board graphics, but they're very basic. I think it's Radeon HD 4290, so it's very, very basic. Good enough, I mean, for what it is. But my thinking was, in the future, I'll do an upgrade. I'll probably look at getting a Ryzen processor. And I think I would opt to get an NVIDIA card. I know most people say, well, that doesn't make sense. Why won't you get a Radeon? Well... The NVIDIA card, in my opinion, is easier to get the hardware drivers installed and get everything working, and OBS uh, does support the NVIDIA in Linux, so I think it would be, a, I wouldn't have to compile everything, compile FFmpeg, because there is an FFmpeg version on RPM Fusion that supports the uh, NVIDIA GPU. So theoretically, anyway, I, I could get uh, hardware support in OBS. So that's my future plan. The other thing I could do, since I don't have a whole lot of money right now, I, I did some investment in some other hardware for 
fast gadgets uh, might be to just buy a new AM3 Plus motherboard since really I just bought that 16 gigs of memory. Get a nicer video card or just use the NVIDIA card that I already have, which actually is decent. It's a 640 GT. Now I know what you're saying. For gaming, no, it's not decent, but doing virtualization and things like that I think would be okay. It would be more than powerful enough. This 1050 5T processor that I've been using, AMD, uh, you know, 6 core, it's done a really good job. And even now today, letting the processor do all the work, uh, rendering the video as well as running a virtual machine, it's actually done reasonably well. And as far as the install here goes, using one core, um, I really haven't seen speed-wise all that much difference because remember I did install this yesterday when I thought I was recording and it was maybe just a little bit faster but really not that much. Alright so installation is complete. I'll just go ahead and click quit. So far things are basically the same and we are gonna I'm gonna go ahead and shut it all the way down because I'm gonna go ahead and give this system a couple of extra cores since we're only hitting about 62% of processor. So I'm going to go into settings and system processor. What do you think? Maybe three? I know it's hard to see. Um, this is because I have the fonts enlarged here so they're easier to read for me. Because I'm actually using a 49-inch uh, Sony Bravia 4K TV. Let's check acceleration. Everything's enabled there. I want to check the display. I think we're going to boost this up to 128. Uh, and we'll enable 3D and click OK. And we're going to restart. And see how much of a processor impact it makes. Oh, I forgot to get rid of the media. Let's see if I can get my mouse back. Why do I not have my mouse back yet? Okay, well, it looks like there we go. I don't know why that worked. Uh, usually Control-Alt will... Well, anyway... I'm thinking of VMware. Control Alt will get you out of VMware, but I actually needed to use the right control key. So let's remove the disk from the virtual drive and we'll go ahead and reset the machine. And now we get the 4.11 kernel. So I'll click into the screen. Well, it's booting anyway. With VirtualBox, of course, your right control key will release you from the virtual machine. Now, I did an update uh, yesterday first, but I think I'm going to go backwards on that. Instead of doing that, I'm going to make sure some packages are installed that I need to use the uh, VirtualBox driver set that's built in. So before I start that, I'm going to do this install. So most of this is identical. They did have something new. I'm going to show you. Okay, we're going to start using Fedora. I don't recall this being available in the previous version of Fedora, but it's been a while for me. Uh, but they had some pretty cool GNOME help videos. And they're just basic videos, but you, you can look at all kinds of different things. Launch apps, change the wallpaper, and we can play this basic video. It has a little bit of music playing. In some ways, I wonder if it's too basic. Because I'm not really sure what, what they were clicking on here. So that's the speaker, and that's what it looked like they were clicking on. 
Anyway, I thought that was a nifty addition. So I'm going to close that. Cruise to activities. And we want to add the terminal to favorites. That's usually the very first thing that I do. And we'll go ahead and run it. And I'm going to do DNF install kernel devil kernel oops headers and I think GCC is probably already installed but we'll check anyway put in the sudo password okay things are working yeah, before, it was trial and error. Basically, you would have to do this repeatedly, run the command. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't because of the network issues that Red Hat and Fedora were having yesterday. Things are way better today. So, host processing, hanging around 60 to 70%. I think that's completely doable. Memory, 4.9 gigs, no big deal. I really do think I want to go ahead and get a new AM3 motherboard because at the very least that's a small expense comparatively and then I could get my NVIDIA card back in and get that going. If anybody's had experience uh, getting a Radeon card, one of the newer Radeon cards with AMD working in Linux, let me know how it went for you. I, I am curious to know if it's as easy as it is with NVIDIA. Okay, kernel devil, kernel header, and we're doing an upgrade of live GCC, which is acceptable. <clears throat> and the kernels are not being upgraded, which is a good thing. Uh, if they, if you do upgrade your kernels, and then you want to install the virtual box drivers and tools you're better off doing a reboot because my experience has been it doesn't work which is understandable so you'd get a kernel update but the current running kernel is the older version after the update and it doesn't work right you get an error so a simple reboot if you do a kernel update will fix that problem Okay, so I am going to go ahead and go to Devices and insert the Guest Edition CD image. And I'm going to tell it to run it. See if I got all the packages I need. Sometimes you're missing one and you have to restart it again. We'll see how it goes. And I'm still missing something else. So let's check out that log. Bring this down here. It seems like I'm always missing one thing or another. Uh, let's do less var log v box guest editions dot log. Failed. Please check that you have GCC make the header files for your Linux kernel and possibly Perl installed. Hmm, I'm wondering if I have Make installed. Make's already installed. What about Perl? Perl's already installed. Let's have a look at that error again. You know what? It's not that at all. Oh, I mean, yeah, sure, I gotta have the kernel headers and all that, but uh, what I think it is, 
All right, so we're going to set and force on SE Linux to permissive. <laughs> Maybe I should do sudo. What do you think? Set and force permissive. All right, so now enforce permissive. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're trying again. <clears throat> Hopefully with SE Linux in permissive mode, it'll now work. Still no. Well, let's look at the other log file. I'm able to find sources of your current Linux kernel. Ah, 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 ah. My luck. 4.11.0rc3. And if we do a DNF list kernel dash headers, what version did it download? There you go, folks. See what happens when the kernel header is not updated. So we'll do a DNF update kernel. We'll say yes. That way we get everything on the same version. In some ways that's a failing of DNF because it doesn't download the current kernel uh, headers and devil. It actually downloaded, or, or sorry, me, it did download the current updated version instead of the kernel version that I have installed. So, you know, you basically have no choice but to move forward. You can find them. Um, RPM Find is a great place to get older packages, so there there is a possible way to get them, and I think you can specify precisely which one you want. So I just put in kernel header, and if I had specified which version precisely, I probably could have gotten it. And we'll do a reboot. And this is some of the criticisms that people levy at Linux. You know, you can't just drop and drag something uh, to make it work like you can in Mac. You can't just double click an installer file like you can in Windows and it just installs. At least most of the time it installs. There's always four to five different variables going on when you install a package. Not always, but much of the time, especially when you're dealing with um, packages or drivers that impact the kernel. Go back to the command line again and change directory to run media mark. And we might as well become root. So now there's a small chance that it's actually going to work. I've done this so many times, you think I would remember all these variables and issues and problems. And Yeah, well, anyway. I think it's going to work this time. Well, I thought it was going to work. Uh, before I go any further, I'll just do a quick check. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank God for security. It keeps you from installing packages that you need to install. If that was what the problem is, we may still have four or five more variables going on here. Yes, failed again. Okay. Error. Kernel configuration is invalid. 
Well, honestly, I can't really be sure what exactly is going on here. A lot of the time what I do at this point is a simple DNF update. Get everything updated, then try again to go ahead and run the kernel, uh, the kernel drivers. And there's a quite a chunk of updates, and this is alpha software after all, so I'm going to go ahead and do package updates. That way, uh, our test VM machine will be as up-to-date as it can be for the alpha. And the cool thing about exploring alpha packages uh, with Fedora is as they release more and more package updates, the virtual machine, well, Fedora 26 gets updated, and when they go move to beta, you're getting all those packages as well. So you're in beta mode and so on. You just keep marching forward as they do the updates until they do an actual release. You can argue that there might be an issue with it not being clean. So I'm not so sure that's an issue personally. You know, if you're on the alpha and you're just testing and then you update it to the beta and then finally it goes to the golden release and you're, you're continuously doing updates you're going to get those latest updates so i'm going to let this do an update and we'll be right back Okay, so we've wrapped up the update to Fedora 26 Alpha, and I'm going to issue a reboot. Let it reboot, and we'll see if we can get the VirtualBox drivers installed. All right, we're back from the reboot. And we're going to try and get the VirtualBox drivers installed. Now that I think of it, I should have probably checked SE Linux. It's probably not set correctly. And of course I could edit the configuration file and permanently change it, which I probably will do and usually do with my workstations. Well, looking at the log again, we do have some errors here. So I think what I'm going to do is start a new terminal and see if I can install those packages. Uh, of course, I forget you have to right-click to get a new window. So let's see if we can get any of those packages installed. Hmm... Well, I'm pretty sure I can do a elf utils. Oops. I don't know if that'll make any difference at all. And we could do a DNF list elf utils star and see if there's anything else available that we can grab. Yes, there is a ton, actually. Funny that it wouldn't let me install it. Okay, we'll get that package. And... Quit out of here. It's worth a try. Darn, still a problem. Let's go look at that log again. No libelf errors anymore. Kernel config is invalid. Let's see what's installed kernel wise here. Installed packages kernel, core, devil headers, modules. Um, available packages, debug, tools. Well, I wonder what version I have here of VirtualBox. 5.1.10. I think... Let's power off the VM and let's see if there's an update for VirtualBox. 
Yes, there most assuredly is. I don't know if that'll help at all. Um, it's always worth a try, right? And I'm sure there's going to be a new set of tools to go with it. You can't really say if it's a Fedora 26 error or a uh, virtual box error, you know, because virtual box is older, Fedora 26 is brand spanking new with a very fresh kernel update. So, you know, it is possible. And I see now that I've done the update, it's asking me to insert it again. So I'm hoping it'll be the latest edition. So, what do we got? You know, I, I saw this before on VirtualBox on my, of all things, my Windows machine. I was running VirtualBox in Windows. I don't know what this is all about. Anyway. Ah, uh, well, let's go ahead and insert the guest edition CD. Good, it wants me to download the latest ones. And we'll do download. So we'll let that download continue. And oh, I can't do anything in the VM while it's downloading. What a bummer. Because I definitely want to. Okay, so it's 5.18. We will insert it. Say OK, and uh, I'll just go do a sudo bash. I really didn't think I was going to be rebooting this many times, um, so I didn't think I'd have to keep doing the set enforce command. And we'll go to run. Media Mark. Okay, so it's removing the installed version 5.1.10. Sorry, this isn't a very exciting look into Fedora 26. Um, these kind of things, they don't really bother me because I learn a lot when I'm doing it. And I think that's the whole point. So, no luck with 5.1. Interesting that it's saying I'm in 5.1.10. I really shouldn't be. Yeah, check that out. Okay, well, let's do this again. Okay. Let's cruise here. I'm not paying attention very well because that was still 5.1. Let's eject it. Okay. Now let's go back to devices, insert. Okay. And it is 5.1.18. Anyway, I do learn a lot. And that's the whole point, really. You know, this is obviously alpha software, so you get what you get. And... I have no expectations right now, and that's why I'm running it in a virtual machine instead of running it on my actual system. And I like the process. I like the learning process and going through different things, things I never thought I would be learning, you know, checking into logs, looking at kernel updates, installing different kernel packages, all the different things you learn about Linux. And it's so important because if you want to support server technology this is something that you're going to have to be able to do and understand and understand all the different nuances so we we checked uh se linux we checked the kernel version we installed new kernel packages we did system updates we've done a host system update to install virtualbox and we now have 
our VirtualBox kernel editions working. So it was VirtualBox needed to be updated. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to reboot again because the display driver probably... Yeah, it's still got the basic settings. So I'll do that. And we're going to reboot one more time. And log in and see what we get. All right, I can see already that resolution is different, so I'm pretty sure it's auto scaling. And I should be able to drag this to any size I want now with the VBox guest editions. And look how much less CPU usage I'm seeing. So I was at 70 to 80 percent. So once we get those, uh oh, we better try that again. Once we get those drivers installed, things should function much better. Or not, right? <laughs> it looks like we got a little problem. Let's try GNOME on Xorg and see what happens. So Wayland didn't work. We're hoping Xorg's going to work. I want to pull this corner and make it larger, but I'm going to wait and see if the thing will even log in. I'm going to check out keyboard settings. One thing I like to do in my real machine when I'm having problems is you can do a control, control all F1 or F2 and you can go to a text only mode. So is there a way to do that inside the virtual machine? So no shortcuts here so far. Control delete is host plus delete. Control alt backspace is host plus backspace. So I wonder if we can try it. Control F2. Control F3. Yeah, we can. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So if you want a virtual, you have on every Linux system, well, at least most of them, at least, I think, seven or eight uh, virtual screens that you can switch to. And normally it's Control-Alt-F1, which is usually the GUI, F2, which would be another command line, F3, F4, and so on. And if you want to do it in virtual box, you press Control, then the F key. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, since I logged in as root, I'm just going to see if there's any new updates. So no, nothing to do yet. Hmm, well, let's try a power off. And we're going to try and power it back up. And see if we get lucky. I think we managed to break it. I think we did a pretty good job if we did. I'm being facetious, of course, but it is alpha software. I've seen it work before. You know what, though? I, I told it to stay. It's going to be on Xorg again. Drat. Now, I did control F1 and I got back to the login screen. Yeah, this is the part I'm not 100% sure on. What is this all about? Am I going to have to go check on this too? Do we have a problem with the newer version of VirtualBox? I wonder if that has to do with the 3D mode. 3D support that I turned on in settings here. I'm 
Yeah, there's Control F1. So it wants me to unlock. Hmm. Let's go to Control F3. Let's see if we can take it down to a net three. So I'm going to do a Control F1 again. Uh, well, it looks like it didn't work. I was hoping to go down to the command line. My thinking is, if for whatever reason it can't boot up uh, and get into the graphical interface with those drivers, I'll just wait and do an update, do a DNF update in a few days, because I can still get to the command line. So I just do Control F3. I still can get to the command line. And it wants me to unlock. So it thinks it's in the graphical interface. What happens if I drag the window bigger? Nothing. Oh, it actually did. It resized it. So it thinks it's working. So I'm going to leave this here and expect to see a follow-up on Fedora 26, but suffice it to say, this is what you get with early alpha software. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it was a long video. And again, I do thank you for watching. Uh, if you did like the video, give it a like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. And if you really enjoyed it, consider sharing it. I always do appreciate that. And I will see you next time on Fast Gadgets.